This right here is the Xtool M1. It's a combined laser and blade cutting machine. So if you're a maker or small business entrepreneur looking to be able to make customized bespoke products, this could be a really excellent tool for doing just that. It's definitely a little bit above the basic consumer level, especially when you look at the price point and capabilities, but it has lots of features packed in. So today I really wanna get it out of the box, get it set up and try some of those features, see how well it works. Today's video is sponsored by JLC PCB, who provide a high quality, low cost and fast delivery on printed circuit board manufacture and assembly. To take advantage of their latest offer, simply upload your files, select the settings that you want, like a black finish, purchase and wait for delivery. I use JLC PCB to manufacture Rainbow Shift, a custom RGB controller. Check them out via the link below. Before we start, just a quick note on laser safety. The cutting laser is a class 4 laser, which means it's capable of irreparable damage to your eyesight even after reflection, so be sure to operate the machine safely in a controlled environment and wear safety glasses at all times. Unfortunately though, those are not included. The M1 comes in a couple of variants. The one I have here is the 10 watt laser version. I also have the premium materials box, smoke purifier, spare blades and a rotary tool. The M1 itself comes fully pre-assembled with a cutting area of 385 by 300 millimeters with accuracy of 0.01 millimeters and the smallest laser spot of 0.08 millimeters square. The rotary tool uses a stepper motor to precisely control the rotation of whatever object is on it and it's designed for engraving on cylindrical objects such as maybe things like water bottles where you could put a logo or a quirky message. There's also a three jaw chuck for objects with smaller diameters. The materials box comes with this handy guide for various machine settings and it's really well packed with a great variety and quantity in a range of different colours. This is pretty useful for getting started and a really nice way to get those creative juices flowing. It personally helped me understand the capabilities of the machine, what results I can expect to get and it triggered some ideas for potential projects. The one thing I didn't like is that none of the materials are labelled so it can be hard to know what's what and using a laser on some of these materials can be dangerous, so it's important to know. The first step in getting set up was fume extraction. The M1 comes with a flexible duct, but I opted for this smoke purifier too, which turned out to be much larger and heavier than I expected. Considering it's a steel box though, it's actually not that heavy, and it does come with handles and wheels, which is pretty nice. Although quite loud, the tone of the fan, which obviously does the extraction, is very low, so it's not really annoying and doesn't bother me. I decided to measure the sound levels and it was around 55 decibels on low and around 66 on maximum, but this was on a hard desk. On the carpet, it was a bit quieter. Using the spring clamp to hold the duct to the back of the machine works pretty well, but it was quite hard to install. Again due to being a strong spring. As soon as you turn the printer on, it will home automatically, so just be aware of that and make sure there's nothing in the printer when you turn it on. Now we've got the main hardware set up and our fume extraction dealt with, the next step is to install a blade into the cutter. Installing the blade was another well thought out process and no tools are needed. The cutting blade is attached by magnets and just pulls out of the tool head, and then you unscrew the collet and insert a blade. You screw it back up, push it back in, and you're done. It's a very simple process, very easy to do. The next step was connecting the M1 to the software. Another really simple operation. There's no settings like board rate or COM port. You just click connect and select the connected machine. To start creating the cut or engrave features, you first select the operation you want, then the material you want to operate on. Once that's done, you can use the six options on the left side to add shapes, images, text, etc. to the workspace. There are quite a few shapes to select from, but I'm just going to keep it simple to start with, with this basic L shape. Once in the workspace, you can move, resize and rotate the shape as you need. If you want to set specific dimensions, you can't really change its proportions, but you can set the bounding box using the parameters in the top center of the screen. Since I'm going to cut this from vinyl sticker, I added the double-sided sticky sheet to hold the material in place while cutting. This held the material really well, but I don't know how to store this afterwards without it sticking to literally everything it touches, seeing as it's sticky on both sides. Now for one of the coolest features of the machine. The second you close the lid, the software triggers a photo, allowing you to position your shape as if it were directly onto the material. 
When you're ready to start, you click Process. This sends you to the processing screen where you can first use framing to double check your positioning. You tap the button on the front of the machine and this is what the process looks like when you put your big head in the way of the camera. Once you're happy with the framing, click Start and then the button on the front of the machine again to start the actual cutting process. Since this is a really simple part, you can see the whole process here in real time. Well, I do my best to get my head in the way again. The cut wasn't perfect, but it was quite easy still to pull it away from the rest of the material without it taking any damage. I'm really impressed with the final result. It's got nice straight edges, good cuts, clean corners. Using the same process and material, I also cut out this maple leaf, which is much more detailed, and that also came out really nicely. Next, I switched up the material to this polyurethane, aka fake leather, to cut out a gear shape and vector 3D logo. Again, the material stuck down really well to the blue sticky stuff, it cut really cleanly and made for a really good result. By the way, if you like reviews of products like this, don't forget to subscribe. Before switching to the laser, I did one more cut in a slightly thicker plastic just to see how well it handled it, and again, the settings were fine and they came out absolutely perfect. The next thing I wanted to try was laser engraving these cool dog tags that were included. So I placed the uh, prisms, which you also get included, onto the base, which probably actually wasn't required for this, but I did it anyway, and then placed the tag on top. Using the text tool, I added the name of my imaginary dog Jasper and set it to engrave rather than score so that the text is all filled in. I did my best to align it centrally and sent it off to the machine. This process took a little bit longer as it has to operate line by line at just the width of the laser, but after just a few minutes it was all done and the result was pretty impressive. Although it wasn't quite central, I think the text itself looks really good. It's nice and clear and easy to read. Next, I moved to laser cutting, so I loaded up this 3mm plywood into the machine and dropped one of the kind of pulley looking shapes into the workspace. I chose the right material and set the process to cut. I have the smoke purifier turned on for all these laser based processes by the way, as obviously this is what can cause harmful or just unpleasant smoke and fumes, so the filter helps get rid of those. For this cutting process I finally managed to take a half decent video without my head getting in the way, so I thought we'd watch this as it's a rather satisfying process to watch. While the smoke purifier was doing a pretty good job of removing smoke from the cutting area, unfortunately I could actually still smell the burning wood in the room where I was cutting, so I don't know how well that filter is actually working. Next I tested out the Smart Fill software function. The idea is that it allows you to engrave the same thing onto many individual pieces that are just randomly orientated in the workspace. I put my logo on the central piece in software and used Smart Fill to populate everything else. While it's a cool idea, it did miss one and the orientation was not really well aligned for the rest of the tags. If quantity is more important than quality, then it's fine. It, it did mostly work. But if you want them all identical, I'd suggest using a jig and the array tool so that they're all perfectly aligned. While these were printing, I used my camera as an inspection tool to see if the lid's safety switch worked as it should do. Sadly, it failed as the camera was able to quite easily see the flash of the laser before the switch could cut out. This really needs to be corrected to prevent accidental eye damage. Next, I found some coloured business cards in the material pack, so I dropped one into the machine and arranged my logo, name and contact info into the software workspace. I set everything to engrave and sent it off to the machine. Being an engraved process, it operates line by line, so it did take a little while, but the results are actually really impressive. For the next test, I wanted to see how well it would do with much larger jobs on materials that aren't flat. So I purchased this old patent drawing image style thing from Etsy and loaded it into the software. Processing the image was pretty easy with the provided tools. I just had to tweak a couple of sliders to make it into a simple black and white picture so the software then knows to engrave the black parts and ignore the white. At least that seems to be the case. The result was again really impressive. I love these drawings of old machines so I'll probably finish this one up with some oil and a 3D printed frame. The final project was a kinetic coaster, again purchased from Etsy. All I had to do was drag the SVG files into the software workspace, set the correct material and all the lines to cut, and send it off to the machine. Since this was another full cut through 3mm wood, it did make quite a lot of smoke. 
The purifier did a really good job of removing the smoke from the chamber, but again, the smell was still a little apparent in the output from the smoke purifier, suggesting that it doesn't remove all of those impurities. A few minutes later, I had all the parts cut out, and barring a few here and there which just needed to be pulled very slightly, they all separated pretty easily from the frame. One problem I did notice though is that with these prisms elevating the material, small pieces will fall down once cut and can fall under another cut path. As a result, some of the smaller pieces did get secondary cut marks on them. In my case, it didn't matter because I had spares, but just be aware of this. It may be better for you to use the mesh that's also available as it will support much smaller parts without them moving until the whole process is finished. Overall, the design worked out quite well and the assembly was a fairly simple process, meaning the design is obviously quite good and that the machine is able to achieve consistent accuracy, which is always very important. Overall, the Xtool M1 has been a really fun machine to use. It's definitely not without its drawbacks, like the limited laser safety and the rotary tool being actually carelessly dangerous. However, if those issues are fixed, this is a very capable tool with loads of well-tuned profiles for a wide range of materials. It's incredibly easy to use, I'm pretty new to the world of laser cutters and engraving, and I didn't have any problems getting set up and making things basically straight away. Some of the features like smart fill and camera based alignment didn't work particularly well, and framing is kind of useless because you can't always see the laser point directly since the machine only opens from the top, but I got them fine without those things anyway. Besides, if you are really using this machine seriously, I definitely recommend making your own jigs so you can get your alignment perfect every single time. Ultimately, what you get is a well-built machine that delivers when it comes to the quality of the parts that it makes. If what you saw me make is similar to what you want to do, I definitely recommend this machine and a pair of laser safety glasses. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.